Hello, church. Welcome back once again to our devotional. Uh, let's dive right into the Word, shall we? Today we're in Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 16. Read with me. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. All right, so what's going on here? Jesus has died, he has resurrected, and is now giving his disciples uh, what is famously known as the Great Commission. He is outlining for them their mission after he leaves the earth. Now, this was a very confusing, exciting, kind of scary time for the disciples. They were expecting that Jesus was going to bring in an earthly kingdom centered in Jerusalem, that he was going to set himself up as king of the world. They're going to conquer Rome. It's going to be great. But that's not God's plan here. God was ushering in a spiritual kingdom, and they were going to be a part of it by sharing the good news with everyone. Now, uh, due to this uh, confusion, this lack of understanding, and then just kind of the, the strange situation in general of this guy you had been following, he died, you saw him die, and now he's back. Some of the disciples weren't sure. They doubted. I mean, yeah, Jesus is back, and that's awesome, but he's not doing what he expected what we expected him to do, and he's asking us to do things that we don't know how to do. Very confusing time for some of them. And doubt springs up naturally in times of confusion uh, or uncertainty. And I think the same is true for you and me. When we experience seasons of confusion, experience seasons where things are unsteady or they're not the way we expected them to be, we can start to doubt the goodness of God, doubt the plans and purposes of God for our lives, and probably most especially, we begin to doubt our ability to fulfill what God has called us to do. We start to pull back. We question, am I really qualified to love my family the way God wants me to? Am I really qualified to share uh, what's good about Jesus with the people at work? Am I really qualified to serve at church and be a part of God's story in somebody else's life? Jesus gives the disciples some great reassurance, and he gives us the very same reassurance. He says, first of all, all authority has been given to me, therefore you go. Now that's interesting, because typically we would think, all right, God, if you want me to go, give me the authority, give me the power, and I'll go out and do it in my own strength. That's where we're comfortable. That's what we like to do. But that's not what Jesus says. He says, I'm the one with the authority. I'm the one with the power, so you go and represent me. I think if we were honest, we would rather we be the ones with the authority and the power that we wouldn't have to depend on Jesus or anyone else to do what he wants us to do, but that's not what he wants. That's not how he set this up. He set this up so that he's going to keep the authority, he's going to keep the power, and he's going to share it with us as we step out in faith. Whew, that's scary. That's scary. Uh, before we open our mouths to tell someone about Jesus, before we go to next steps, before we fill out the, the form that says we're going to serve and be a part of a team, God expects us to trust him, that he's going to be there when we need him. Wow. Do we have that kind of faith today, to, to trust in Jesus, even though we're not the ones carrying the authority. He's the one carrying the authority. Can we trust him enough to step out in faith and say, Lord, I can't do this on my own, but you told me to, so I'm going to trust you that when push comes to shove, you're going to be there. The second thing that Jesus gives them as a reassurance is his presence. He's not sending them out into the world to, to preach the gospel alone. He says, I promise I'll be with you. And that promise is fulfilled by the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. 
I want to encourage you today. Whatever you're facing, whatever call that God's placed on your life, whatever challenge or temptation you're wrestling with today, you're not alone. The Holy Spirit, God's promised gift to you and me, He's available right now. It's why we do these devotionals. It's why we have uh, quiet time. It's why we spend time in God's Word and in prayer. Because we need Him. We need His presence. We need His help if we're going to be the people God's called us to be. You know, you read the Bible and you look at all the stuff that even right here, what Jesus said, make disciples, teach them to obey, baptize. This is huge, world-changing, eternity-shaping stuff. And you and I are not capable of doing this on our own. We need God. We need the power of His Holy Spirit working through us. So I want to encourage you today, you're not alone. You're not walking in your own authority. You're not walking in your own power. But you have Jesus with you. Don't be discouraged today if you face doubt. I mean, we're not more spiritual than the disciples, and they had doubt. They didn't know what was coming next. They didn't understand what Jesus was doing with their lives, what his plans were. You know, we can look back and read the book of Acts and see all the amazing things that God's going to do. But at this point in their lives, they had no idea. Maybe today you're the same way. Maybe today you have no idea what God wants to do with you. All you know is that he's asked you to serve, he's asked you to trust, he's asked you to obey, and he's promised you he's going to give you the power to do it, and he's going to give you his presence every single day. You're never alone. You're never by yourself. You're never without his power and his authority walking with you in and through every challenge that might come your way today. You can do everything that God has called you to do. I promise you can. Don't count yourself out. Don't disqualify yourself. Don't even look at yesterday and you failed. And oh man, I failed yesterday. I'll never get it right today. You can because God's with you. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We, we give you thanks today that you've not left us alone. What you've given us, the Holy Spirit, our helper, our comforter, God, the one who empowers us to live like you live. God, we thank you that you have all authority in heaven and on earth, and you have released a portion of that to us so that we can help people see you more clearly. God, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that they would walk out your call in their life today full of power, full of integrity, and knowing, being comforted by your presence every day, every moment. In Jesus' name, amen.